Hey y'all, Tawana Michelle here, Narcissistic Abuse Recovery Coach and Mental Health Therapist. And today I want to talk to you guys about what you absolutely have to do if you want to stop attracting narcissists, okay? And yes, let me repeat that, you are attracting narcissists. I know there are some of us who don't like to believe that. We like to think that we just happen to be randomly chosen by the narcissist and we were a victim of their master manipulation. While some of that is true, right? You were a victim of the narcissist master manipulation, okay? And you were chosen by them, but it was not randomly. The narcissist chose you because they saw what they considered vulnerability. They saw what they considered to be an easy target. And yes, there are narcissists who choose more of a challenge, but most narcissists don't. They're going to choose someone they know who they are 100 percent or as close to that as possible, that they are going to be able to manipulate that person and have ultimate power and control over them because that is what they want. Right. So we are tra attracting these narcissists um, because they, they see that. Right. They can pick you out in a the crowd. They know who you are. And also there are certain personality types that attract narcissists. There are certain wounded types that attract narcissists. So for one, if you are the type of person who are just naturally empathic, forgiving, compassionate, kind, caring, listen, all of those are strengths. Don't ever let go of those qualities because you tend to be attracting people who take advantage of those things about you. Those are your strengths. What you need to do is learn how to set boundaries. Use those strengths in a way where you can still be that loving, caring, forgiving person, but at the same time, protect yourself. Setting healthy boundaries is important. So that type of person will often attract narcissists or other toxic individuals who depend on being with someone who will basically put up with their stuff and forgive them over and over and over again. And they feed off of that. Okay, narcissists are addicted to people just as codependents are addicted to people. So they feed off of that. They need that. They need that unconditional admiration, affection, love. Even though they, they don't like it, they, they don't think highly of someone who has those qualities, but they need that in order to continue to do the things that they are doing behaviorally that are helping them maintain an image and keep them in a position where they appear and feel more superior. Their core, the narcissist, has feelings of inadequacy and inferiority. And so they are going to do whatever they can to avoid accessing that. That's someone who's very loving, right? They love others. They care about people. They are very forgiving towards others. That type of person can be very hard on themselves. They can harbor a lot of guilt, which can make it difficult to set boundaries. They can be selfless instead of being able to put themselves first and protect themselves. And so the narcissist knows that. And so you, you really need to have a balance. But that type of personality is going to attract narcissists because they need that. They need someone that's going to be there no matter what. And not only just be there, but are more likely to continue to accept and tolerate the narcissist's mistreatment and disrespect over and over again. Basically, the narcissist has no desire to change, and so they need to be with someone that is not gonna require them to change. So that is one type. Another type of person that's attracted to the narcissist is someone who is still wounded at their core. They still have inner child wounds that they have not healed. They have childhood wounds. They have attachment wounds that they have not addressed. So typically someone that has any type of attachment trauma, they perhaps did not get the love and affection and their emotional needs met as children. And so they were always searching for this. These people are likely people pleasers and validation seekers because they always felt like they had to try and do something to earn the love of their caregiver who they didn't get it from. And so they started doing things to please that person, that caregiver, in order to feel loved in return. 
So this dynamic transfers from our childhoods into our adult lives and specifically in romantic relationships. Also, if you came from a family of origin where you had a narcissistic parent, if you had a narcissistic parent, then you definitely did not get your needs met. You were a pawn, you were a supply for that parent. And that love that you got was definitely conditional. If you met their needs, if you did exactly what they wanted you to do, if you allowed them to stay in a position of control and power, and if you were good enough that they felt was in alignment with their image or the image that they wanted to portray. So if you had that, for one, that's familiar to you. It feels like home to you. So you are naturally or subconsciously going to seek that out. So if you came from that type of uh, family where you have a narcissistic parent, then you're likely going to attract narcissists. And you're also going to not only attract them to you, you're going to subconsciously be attracted to them. And then another type of childhood trauma that's family of origin related is the family where there was actual abuse, there was actual physical neglect, there was abandonment. So we're moving beyond just getting an emotional need unmet. And I say, just give me like, that's not, I mean, that's not a little thing. That's huge. But also the lack of not getting something is one thing and then getting something that is hurtful is another. So then there are families where there was actual abuse, there was actual abandonment, there was actual neglect. And so being harmed was equated to being loved. Because think about it, as a kid, there's no way for one, for your own psychological and emotional survival and even physical, depending on your age, you cannot accept that your parent must not love you. Therefore, they wouldn't treat me like this. For one, I'm not saying they didn't love you. Usually those parents don't know how to show love and have their own unhealed trauma from their parents. Okay. But as a kid trying to make sense of it, the only thing you can do is internalize that and say, there must be something wrong with me because there's no way a parent would not love me. There's no way a parent would want to harm me. There's no way a parent would not want to give me love and affection unless there was something wrong with me. And so again, all of that is going to drive you into that approval seeking, people pleasing behavior or it's going to cause you to go into such a great sense of denial as a defense mechanism and recreate the narrative and decide who you want to be and reject those parts of you that are associated with shame from your parents making you feel like you're not good enough. So you replace that with the extreme opposite end of the spectrum, which is superiority and grandiosity, and you become the narcissist. So the narcissist had, comes from trauma also. But if you have any type of traumatic, interpersonally traumatic past, and you have not healed from all of that, you are going to attract narcissists. They're going to be drawn to you. You're going to be drawn to them. It's going to be like magnets. So, so if you came from a family where you didn't really feel loved, then you never really got that. And so you never really learned to love yourself. You didn't see yourself in a loving way. You saw yourself as flawed. If I weren't flawed, these things wouldn't be happening. So you never really learned to love yourself. And, and the only way you felt worthy was to somehow earn something that felt like love through being needed, being helpful, showing up for others. Because when you do that, oh, you get so much praise and acknowledgement and, and attention and all those needs get met, but it's conditional and you have to do something to earn it. Ends up being denying your own needs, maintaining the needs of others, putting their feelings before your own. So what happens is that because you lack a sense of self and self-love and self-worth, and you need to feel needed and loved and you're used to giving to others in relationships at the expense of your own feelings and needs, at the expense of self through self-sacrifice and self-abandonment, then you start to seek that out. And because the narcissist needs someone to make them feel like they are worthy enough to completely abandon themselves, to just pour everything they have into them because they, they are so deserving of it. 
because they are so amazing and superior, then that's what they see. And so because of that, these two just are magnetically drawn to each other. But the way to prevent these narcissists being drawn to you is to one, recognize the reason this is happening. Increase your awareness and understanding of where you need to do your healing work. Do you need to go back to that family of origin trauma and heal that those wounds and heal that inner child? Do you need to work on building up your own sense of self and self-worth and self-love so that you're not having to seek that externally? Do you have to understand and reject those distorted perceptions that you have about yourself and about relationships in general? Do you need to unlearn all of these false beliefs about love looking a certain way and relationships looking a certain way when it's actually unhealthy, abusive, dysfunctional? So on the one hand, we learn these things, we believe these things, that's what we're drawn to. It's familiar, it feels like home, so that's what we're drawn to. And also subconsciously, we are reenacting trauma in an attempt to try and heal from it. So if you want to stop attracting narcissists, you have to do all of those things. Increase your awareness. Do your, your healing work on your trauma and your inner self. Work on self-love and self-worth. And you need help to do it. You actually will need someone to help you do it. So seek out a trained mental health counselor, therapist, some people use life coaches to make sure they really understand this stuff and that they have the knowledge and expertise that they need in order to be able to help you. You have to do the work on yourself if you want to stop attracting narcissists. And you have to accept that the type of people you are normally attracted to are not good for you. That was one of the hardest things for me. But you have to accept that that part of you, that uncon even once you heal, that unconscious default programming part of you is going to on some level be always pulled back to what feels familiar, what feels like home and the type of relationship that you were first introduced to, your, which is with your parents or your caregivers. You're always going to be drawn to that. So you have to stay mindful. You have to stay present. You have to do the work. You have to keep keep healing and you have to work on loving yourself, respecting yourself, and setting healthy boundaries when you need to do so. But that's all I have. Let me say one more thing because I get comments about sort of men bashing. I understand that a narcissist can be a man or a woman. I often will use the pronoun, the male pronouns because I am a woman who have been involved with male narcissists, so that just comes natural for me. Sometimes I will say he or she. I mean, I totally understand there are female narcissists and they can be just as damaging as male narcissists. I am in no way men bashing because for one, I don't think all men are narcissists. I don't think most men are narcissists. So when I hear people say that I'm men bashing because I'm talking about narcissists, that really confuses me. Um, I'm, I'm gonna do a separate video on that topic, but just wanted to say that just for those of you who are still watching this video and having any thoughts or um, ideas about that in general, a narcissist can be anyone, okay? But anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below about this topic. Um, why do you think you keep attracting narcissists? Can you, do you resonate with anything that I said? If so, let me know. Um, also, if you have any ideas for future videos put that in the comment section down below if you like this video give it a thumbs up share it out with others who you think may benefit from this topic and if you haven't subscribed to this channel go ahead we'd love to have you be a part of this community and that's it thank you guys so much for watching until next time take care bye